Today on the In All Kinds of Weather Forecast, Portal God Todd. Todd Golden picks up a couple of big-time additions for the Florida Gator basketball program. We talk about those two guys, Elijah Martin and Ruben Chinleu, and we give a little way-too-early preview of the 2024-2025 Gator basketball team. This is the In All Kinds of Weather Forecast. weather forecast i'm like gillespie thrilled to be a part of this brand of course uh, we started this last week i can't thank my buddy neil shulman enough for uh, all of uh, his support and uh, for bringing me on board this is uh our second show together but it's uh pretty awesome uh just a couple reminders of course uh, like subscribe on our youtube page uh, that's how we make money. Uh, follow IAKOW on social media. That's at all kinds of weather on Twitter and at all kinds weather blog on Instagram. Uh, also follow the show IAKOWF, uh, excuse me, IAKOW forecast. Uh, and follow me, Mike A. Gillespie, on Twitter, uh, as well as Facebook. And I'm also on Instagram and all of that good stuff. Uh, Neil, thanks so much for uh, having me again. we got a lot to talk about. Of course, uh, it, hey, it's the end of April, and we're still talking basketball. So that's a great thing. Uh, two huge commitments for Florida in the last week. Uh, the first one, Elijah Martin, massive uh, pickup. This kid... Uh, picked Florida over his old coach who went to uh, Michigan, by the way, from FAU. Uh, picked Florida over Bama, Arkansas, Ole Miss, USC. Uh, part of that Final Four run for FAU. A really, really solid pickup for Todd Golden's backcourt. Yeah, I mean, Todd Golden does it again. I mean, we talk about him as as portal god Todd. There's a reason for that. Golden knows how to make things happen on on the on the recruiting trail, uh, especially in the transfer portal. Elijah Martin, one of, of three real big pickups. We sort of broke down the first one, uh, Sam Alexis, on a previous pod from Chattanooga. But in the span of nine days, those are three instant impact guys that Florida got. Um, Elijah Martin, the most recent one, but that's probably the biggest. I mean, that that's an all-around beast of an athlete that Florida got. Uh, physical he's strong i mean he can get down in the paint and and get some boards when I mean, he averaged over five rebounds a game each of the last three seasons he hits a lot of shots he hits a lot of big shots not just the 13.1 points per game but he hits the big shots in clutch situations and he's great defensively i mean he can be probably in that like all sec defensive team conversation for florida that's something that the gators maybe haven't had a ton of in the last couple of years. Well, I mean, last year, you don't have to, don't, don't have to tread on that. Like last year, Florida lost their, their NCAA tournament game because it gave up 102 points, albeit with some help from the officials on Colorado's side. But nonetheless, you give up triple digits in a 40-minute game. That's not a good sign. So he can immediately help on the defensive side, and he knows how to win. He's got that pedigree of just WWWWW. He knows how to make things happen, and he knows how to help his team win. Obviously, part of that Final Four run for FAU got them back to the tournament this past year to prove it wasn't a fluke. Actually, almost the exact same seed as the final four run. They didn't have the help of the one seed losing. Um, also didn't even get past the first round against Northwestern. But I mean, I was at that game in Brooklyn. He played well in that. Um, and you know what? He can open up the Gators offense a little bit more than I think even was happening last year with the various ways that he can score. I mean, he can dribble drive. He can pull up, hit the mid range. He can hit the three. I mean, he's a 34% three point shooter. So just really any way you look at it, this is a sensational pickup for the Florida Gators. Yeah, and I mean, all conference the last three years, uh, I mean, this is a kid who comes in with a lot of basketball experience. He's coming in, I believe, as a grad transfer. Uh, and that's exactly what you want these days in college basketball. I mean, look, part of the reason why John Calipari got run out of town is because, you know, he kept recruiting the one and dones, right? And that doesn't work in the NCAA tournament. It's been proven time and time again that you need older guys to make a deep run in the tournament. 
you know, I covered a, a lot of them at Florida, covered one at South Carolina. They were all dudes who had significant playing time, right? Like guys who had two to three years, not just freshmen and sophomores. Uh, so that's what I really like about Elijah Martin is that he comes in with a ton of experience, which is going to help that backcourt a lot, especially with Walter Clayton, hopefully uh, coming back. That would be a, a nice one-two punch uh, for the Gators backcourt. Um you know, and then 26 points in the final four, too. I mean, you said it, but the guy makes shots when it matters most. And I mean, that just says it right there. 26 points in a final four game. I mean, that's playing your best basketball on the biggest stage in basketball. Yeah, I mean, that's like that's what Florida didn't have last year. They had a lot of talented players. I mean, Zion Pullen was talented. He was at an NBA showcase event before he ever stepped foot on the court for Florida, which is why never understand this. He was suspended for three games by the NCAA because he was that good before he ever stepped foot on the court of Florida, that he was invited to an NBA showcase event. So right. the talent was there. And Walter Clayton, obviously we saw what he can do. Micah hand logged in. I mean, we didn't have him in the tournament, but we saw just that, that big size, like as a crane, you can just reach over and just grab boards without even using any technical skill, which he then developed throughout the course of the year. But then like Tyree Samuel, who could back down guys in the post and make things happen. The talent was there. The pieces were there. And especially with what we saw from Marquette and NC state, like Florida had the talent to beat those teams. They just didn't, hit enough big shots and the defense wasn't really there. That was the other, probably the main culprit for why Florida lost that first round game, but Florida had the talent, but they didn't have enough of that big game experience like they're going to get with Elijah Martin. And like they have now with another, I guess, former power six guy uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. I'm sure Ruben, uh, Ruben Chinlay, Chinlayu, but that's what golden is prioritizing. He's going after the experienced guys uh, in the portal this off season, not just the pure talent. He's going after guys who have both. Yeah. Ruben Chinlayu uh, coming from Washington state, six eleven. Uh not a, a big score, but uh, he's only a, a freshman and he's coming in as a sophomore, uh, but five boards a game that's pretty good great offensive rebound numbers great defensive rebound numbers uh set the all-time blocks record by the way too so you know you talk about a guy who's coming in who's obviously just a massive human being which it seems like todd Go that's what todd golden's going after you know i mean when you look at at florida's front court next year they're big i mean they're tall human beings we're not talking about guys that are you know six nine six ten we're talking about seven foot people who are, I mean, like they're towering over other guys in the SEC. You saw it last year with uh, Han Wagner. I mean, just his ability to, uh, you know, some of the best guards in the SEC. I mean, they didn't have a shot. You know, once they got into the front court, it was, you know, lights out, goodbye. You're not going to beat, you know, a seven foot one or whatever Han Wagner is. Um, you, you know, you're, you're not going to go past him. There's just no way. And uh, it seems like, you know, that's the blueprint for success, too. I mean, we talk about teams that have been successful in the NCAA tournament. Look at the two teams that played for the national title this year. Two guys who are mammoth human beings, right? And it almost seems like Todd Golden's kind of taking that blueprint uh, that's been successful and creating it, recreating it for uh, the Florida Gators. Um, you know, Shinyelu part of that Washington state team that's pretty much been dismantled. I think they've had 11 guys uh, transfer, but you know, again, he, he had a lot of offers. I mean, it wasn't like this guy didn't have, you know, any offers coming out of uh, high school or uh, transferring. I mean, picked forward over Gonzaga, uh, Georgia, Kentucky, UCLA, Mississippi state. Uh, so, you know, clearly other teams that were looking for a pretty big presence down low. Yeah, I mean, a couple of points there that you hit on that I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm personally very big on repeating as much as possible. Number one, Todd Golden, like, like the thing that impresses me about anyone, like in any walk of life, whether that's a coach or a social studies teacher or just a personal friend of mine, like is to succeed where you previously have failed. Like that is the definition of growth to me. Todd Golden in his first off season at Florida did horrible. Like we'll just put it on the table. He did awful at landing big guys in the portal. He missed on Norchad O'Meara, who went to Miami. He missed on Jonai Broom, who went to Auburn. And Florida's still paying for those losses. Like, especially with Jonai Broom, Jonai Broom beat Florida up in that SEC championship game. 
But that hurt. And we're still going to, and we're going to pay for it again next year because Todd Golden missed on him in his first offseason. But he clearly learned from that. He did something different. Florida's NIL game, I will have to say, also had a big piece in that. But Todd Golden also had to do something different on the recruiting trail because the NIL piece, without revealing too much of the secret sauce, the NIL was there clearly because, I mean, we got Colin Castleton to stay. So you can't be completely incompetent and get that to happen. So clearly something was working right there. But somewhere along the way, Golden kind of fumbled that. Not the second time around. He got hand locked in. He got Tyree Samuel. He got Walter Clayton. He got Zion Pullen. And he learned to prioritize big guys especially. So not only is he hitting on these guys he's going after in the portal, he's hitting on the big men which was what really killed Florida in his first season where they had a losing record and lost to central Florida on their home court in the NIT. So that's the first thing. The second thing is with Ruben Chinleo, that's a guy that Florida was initially interested in at a high school and who was interested in Florida out of high school. There was a, a Nigerian pipeline there with John Igbunu having played for Florida several years ago. That was something that I don't know how hard Golden hit at that, but, but that was definitely mentioned to him. He, he knew sure. who John Ibunu was, and it intrigued him. He visited Florida, I think, on the week of, I want to say, the, the USF game in 2022 in September. He was in the swamp. I mean, he liked it. He was happy with what he saw, but ultimately didn't work out, went to Washington State. Now you've righted that wrong, too. You, you fixed that issue, too. Like, you missed on him. You corrected that. Obviously, I mean, moment of silence for the Pac-12. Like, I, I do feel bad for the fans and, and the coaches and administrators of those schools. They're in a helpless situation. There's nothing they can do because they just know they don't have the the power of the other schools that have gotten offers from the Big Ten and Big 12. But, th I mean, those programs, Oregon State and Washington State, are just bound to implode. Like, like, there's a reason why Jonathan Smith, the football coach, left for Michigan State, which historically isn't – really that much better than Oregon State, but they're just in a better conference. So Golden kind of got lucky in that sense that those programs were just going to naturally implode, but then he didn't miss twice. He made sure to get this guy he was initially high on and fix the initial miss. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, I honestly can't say enough about Todd Golden's execution and planning, right? Like, it seems to me like he's a guy who – you know, doesn't make the same mistake twice. And he learns from his mistakes, like you said, um, and just a very intelligent human being, right? I can't, honestly, man, like when when they hired Golden, I, I've been around Florida Athletics enough to know, I don't know why, it, maybe it's just a fan in me, but when I'm watching a press conference, I kind of, I, I initially say, yep, that's going to work. No, that's not going to work. Unfortunately, there's been a lot more no lately than yes, but Golden was one of those guys, right, that I said, this dude gets it. This dude definitely gets the, the Florida brand. He wants to be here. He had, you know, his choice. He had his pick of the litter where he wanted to go. Uh, part of the reason why he got the Florida job was because Billy Donovan uh, was one of the guys who recommended Golden. I mean, okay, so if you have Billy Donovan recommending you, Holy crap, man. I mean, that, that, you know, says a, a ton about you, especially at age, what is he, 37, six, or when he got hired, 36. Uh, I mean, just crazy, just a couple years older than I am. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, he's just, I, I'm very, very excited to see this Florida team in year three under Golden. And I think everybody else is too. You know, when you start to look at sort of the, the big picture, the national picture, Florida is going to be in the top 25 to start the year next year. A lot of these pundits, right? Like they're pretty high on UF. I've even seen, you know, in the way too early projections, right? Like the NCAA tournament projections have them, what, like a five or a six seed already. Uh, and I think for, for really good reason, especially if you get Walter Clayton back. Yeah. Walter Clayton and Will Richard, two guys for Florida who technically are declaring for the NBA draft, but they're doing so while maintaining their eligibility. So they could come back, Probably should, especially Will Richard. I mean, I don't think he's ready at all. I, I think that he could maybe make a living in the G League for a couple of years and maybe develop enough that he gets an NBA job somewhere. But I don't think he's really ready. And, and Clayton, Clayton's more interesting because he can do some NBA things, but there are also some times where he just looks like a true freshman in college. So it's kind of like 
all right, what are we going to get out of you if we draft you? So we're not going to take you in the top 10 or the top 20 or the first round. And then all of a sudden, well, now you're debating, should I have gone and should I have not? So I think both of them will be back. Chin Leu, though, like that's the guy that, especially if Micah Hanlockton is out for more than yeah. a week or two of the season, that's a guy like, no, he can't score that much, but he can clean up the boards and he can play defense. Again, another piece on the defensive side that Florida needs and didn't have the last couple of seasons. Fixing or identifying needs, addressing needs, fixing problems. That's why Florida is going to be in the top 25, even though they were, I mean, they're losing Tyree Samuel, which hurts. They're losing Zion Pullen, which I'd say really hurts. And they may not have hand locked in for, I mean, God knows how long could be a, you know, a game could be two months, could be done at all, but we don't know. But Florida, I think is fixing the issues that they had last year and they are maintaining the strengths. Like they were good at offensively, pretty much every way you want to discuss that. Like they could hit the three, they could score inside Tyree Samuel, especially they could clean up the boards. They're maintaining that and they're addressing the weakness they had on the defensive side of the ball. So you see Florida like ranked 14 in the country to start the year. I mean, I probably wouldn't have them that high, but if someone does put them there, don't be surprised because the potential for a sweet 16 run at the very least is absolutely there. Yeah. And I, I mean, look from year one to year two, we saw the massive improvement, the adjustments that golden was able to make. You just have to think that you know, from years two to three, they take an even bigger step. I mean, you know, like I said, this isn't, you know, this isn't Mike white. Okay. Like th these are his guys. These are golden's guys who, um, you know, have proven that, Hey, they're, they're good basketball players. Um, and uh, yeah, I, man, I I'm really excited about next year. Uh, I haven't been this excited about Florida basketball uh, probably since 2017, um, maybe 2020, uh, 2020, I feel like was a, that, that could have been a, a pretty good year too for Florida, but you know, obviously with, um, with black uh, year year. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, man, it, it should be a, a, a ton of fun. Um, they've got, I think it's 10 scholarship players now is what I read. I, I believe it's 10. So a little bit more work to do, but, uh, you know, should be a pretty interesting uh, couple weeks here coming up for Golden's boys. Just a couple interesting weeks and a couple of interesting months. I want to, I want to see what I hear from the off season. I want to, I'm looking forward to those reports of like, who's looking good in practice. And, and like, that's such a, it, it's usually such a non-story when you hear like guys stepping in and playing well in practice because, well, yeah, they're supposed to. That's why they're at Florida. But also because just because you've seen it happen with Golden before, you've seen the instant improvement from year one to year two with these new additions he got last offseason. You feel like, OK, if you hear those same kinds of good things about the new batch of additions, you're thinking, well, we heard that last year. It translated into and clearly into improved levels of success, logic says they'll do it again. So especially in the SEC where you know, yes, Florida is going to lose games because it's a very good conference, but that's going to make them better and prime them better for an NCAA tournament run. So it's about where you start, yes, as a starting point, and then just improving from that, getting better and better throughout the course of the year, the grind of the SEC schedule, the difficult non-conference schedule Florida always has every single year, and then seeing, okay, the talent's there. The hype is there. The proof of concept from the hype is there. The results are there. Let's have some fun in March. Yeah, totally. And it's honestly, it's been a while <laughs> since we've had any fun in March. Um, you know, I mean, seriously, like 20, 2017, um, you know, I mean, I was there up in uh, New York City uh, and so were you, right? Uh, you were up there too, watching those games in person. Um, I was covering Carolina, you know, at the time, but uh, it was so cool to see the alma mater, you know, obviously, you know, uh, beat Wisconsin, you know, one of the greatest shots in Florida basketball history. She is hitting, you know, the the floating three, um, you know, and of course, then they they go on to lose to uh, to Carolina. But, you know, it's it's been a long time since I've been this excited about uh, Florida basketball, man, and I think uh, rightfully so. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good. Feels good to, good to be good. 
Yeah. To know that you can trust your coach to make the right moves in the off season and during the season and in games to get your program where it's supposed to be. It feels good again. Yeah, no, it's uh, and I think we probably feel better than Georgia fans feel right now. I gonna, think that is a very safe assumption. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's our show. Um, yeah. I mean, as Mike said at the start, Give us a, a like, a subscription on YouTube. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. That always helps. Uh, give us a follow at All Kinds Weather on Twitter, at All Kinds Weather blog on Instagram, at IAKOW Forecast. Follow the show on Twitter. Mike, your socials, um, at Mike A. Gillespie, I believe. Right. On Twitter, yes. yeah. Uh, he puts out yes. some good content, too. You guys, some of them might want to hire him. This guy is uh, very, very talented at what he does. He's stepping in on the short term, but he's looking for something long term too. So if you guys out there are are in need of someone with his talents, there he is. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I'm uh, basically just working for my wife right now and my 80 pound golden retriever. So that's what I'm doing uh, full time and uh, looking for jobs. So yeah, man, talking, talking Florida basketball and football with you is pretty easy. Well, it's it's fun. It's easy to it's easy to talk with you. You're a good host, and I look forward to doing some more shows with you in the future. Thanks, Dale. Appreciate it. Of course, go Gators.
you know, when you look at these last four series, obviously, you know, it's just a a beast of a schedule. If they wind up taking three out of four series, there's a way that they play themselves back into the top 16, right? Well, I mean, they're, they're, so there are five series left. So even more time yeah. uh, plus the SEC tournament. So they, they still have six weeks to potentially make a good impression, but I mean, they could, we, we've seen that Florida does have the best series win of any team in the country right now over Texas A&M. Nobody yeah. else can claim that. And Florida also does have two series wins over RPI top 50 teams in LSU and Mississippi state. Still another win in a series over RPI number 65, Miami. So that's a pretty good resume for a team that's only two games over 500. Yeah, um, sure. I think the I think the Gators have to win all five remaining series, or maybe they can afford to lose one, two out of three. Can't get swept. Um, t- like typically, so yeah, like historically speaking, 20 and 10 in the SEC guarantees you a top eight seed. 1911 probably does it. It guarantees you a top 16 seed. Nine, uh, 18 and 12, you're kind of on that border. It depends what the rest of the field does for that top eight, but it guarantees you a top 16 seed. 17 and 13 is where it gets tricky. Like that's where you got to hope that there are a lot of other teams that just win their conferences, like running away with it. And there's no one else who finishes like second or third place in the power leagues, like the SEC or the ACC um, with you know, 22, 23 wins. And you're kind of sitting and hoping and waiting and for selection Monday, I think it is, uh, to see where your name gets called. So Florida, I don't think is going to hit 20, obviously. They already have uh, eight losses. They're not going to go with 13 and two in the last five. So I think more realistic is to say, okay, get 10 more SEC wins and try to get 11. So you get that 17 and 13 record. And then it just becomes a question of how much does the committee value those midweek games? Because Florida has been horrible in them this year. And you lose one or two of them, it doesn't really do any damage. Like FSU got clobbered by Mercer, but who cares? That was one. Now, if you had that, and then you had like five other losses to like Jacksonville, another one to Mercer, UNF, USF, and UCF, well, then it becomes a problem. But that's Florida's problem right now. So they're going to have to get to that 16, 17 game benchmark for SEC wins and then just hope. Yeah, no, I, I mean, for sure. And then if, uh, you know, hopefully the baseball gods are obviously on their side, but it's been very surprising, man, for a team that seems like it has so much firepower, you know, to see them struggling offensively at times, is it's just, and, it, and they're very hot and cold. Um, you know, I don't quite understand it. But again, I never played baseball. So, you know, I, I don't know, you know, how, how these things work, but it is very surprising to me that, you know, a team that does just have, you know, so many good bats, just outright struggle. Um, You know, like the Florida state loss, you know, was that last week or two weeks ago, whenever that Which one? Well, you will write, but the last one. Yeah. Uh, 19 to uh, four one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're just sitting there like, okay, yeah, pitching is obviously an issue. Like this is awful, but you know, maybe, maybe even more surprising was just the fact that there was just no run support at all. Uh, and I know that Florida is not going to put up 19 runs in that game, you know, to, to tie the freaking game, but you know, like at the end of the day, what was it? Four runs? Four? Yeah. He started up two nothing too with the back to back homers and then virtually nothing the rest of the way. Doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Um, You know, but you know, again, like you got to trust solely and I don't think anybody's obviously, you know, doubting what he's able to do, but uh, you know, it does. It's interesting, man. When you start looking at some of the recruiting classes, right? Like Tennessee's up there for, I think this year, next year, um, you know, and Florida was still in the top 10, but it's not what we saw, what, three years ago when Florida had that number one recruiting class. Um, and so, you know, you kind of wonder, like, uh, you know, are, are Florida's glory days behind them? I, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's it's kind of, it's very, very weird how this season has played out. You know, you start in the top five and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you don't even look like a top 30 team. 
And it doesn't like where you are in the postseason doesn't really guarantee you anything. I mean, we saw Florida lose a game in its regional last year, but I did some research on this and going back to 2016, every single college world series that's been contested since then, meaning obviously not 2020, but every single season that there was a tournament held two of the eight teams to make it to Omaha did not host a regional, did not host a super regional. So it, it can be done. Like Florida, would not be breaking some kind of historical precedent by going to someone else's regional and winning it as the road team and then winning a road soup regional. It's happened before it happens every year. So through Clemson. Right. After after Tennessee was the host as the number one overall team and lost Notre Dame in its own super. So like it can happen. It's not like all is lost for Gator baseball. We're just saying they better figure something out quickly. Yeah, no, I mean, a hundred percent. And you know, they, they got to get some pitchers back. Um, you know, and, and, and really just find out where these guys are mentally, because uh, I, I don't, you know, sometimes I just don't think they're there. And I, I think I texted you the other night, obviously this was uh, kind of a, kind of a joke, but you know, when Florida state, you know, was, I mean, just that, that one inning, was it the second, was it the second inning uh, where they, I don't even remember how, how many they scored at this point. I mean, it's, I kind of burned it out of my memory, but I, you know, I texted you. I'm like, maybe they have Florida signs. Like, it just seemed like, dude, every say, I'm not saying they did, by the way. I'm just saying like it, th- that's how bad Florida's pitching staff has been. Or it's just like, I'm sitting there just, I'm thinking to myself, like, I, I'm pretty sure I could figure out some of what Florida's pitching right now. And you know, that's not good. So I don't know if it's changing up signs. I have no idea. I'm not a big baseball guy. Like I said, I've never played, but um, you know, it, it does. It's just really interesting to me that, you know, a Florida pitching staff can just look so incredibly horrendous. Um, like you don't see that very often with Florida. Uh, that doesn't happen. And no. you know, here, here we go. Both in terms of inaccuracy, like walking and hitting guys and in terms of just throwing meatballs where you miss yeah. your spots and they get clobbered. Right. I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a team in my life in college baseball, at least not like at this level, bat around in the first inning without a single out being. Removed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you actually, I think you tweeted that the, the odds of that, the percentages are what, like 0.04%. It's insane. Um, which to be and, fair, what that was going off of MLB data because my dad's friend is like a big MLB advanced stat search, but all right, still, you can't imagine it's going to be that drastically different in college. Yeah. Uh, well, Florida, uh, a chance to obviously write the ship at Vanderbilt this weekend. Uh, really big series. Maybe you start to get something going, and who knows, man? I mean, like, I think you have all I, I know that that fans will probably laugh at this, but you know, taking one from South Carolina might be a really big thing when we look back at this season um you know sometimes that's what it takes you know to start getting things going you know start to feel good about yourself um i think getting swept by usc would have been you know pretty although they did it last year so but two sweeps in a row yeah it's not a rule but i i do think winning that game maybe provides a little bit of uh you know some some positivity anyway uh something that was much much needed after a six game losing streak uh basketball news sam alexis a big forward from chattanooga really big really really big pickup for todd golden uh you gotta love what this guy mm-hmm. does deal uh he's he's a big that loves to offensive rebound he can shoot the ball really well from two obviously golden's boys are, are very analytical in what they do and you know, his, his two point shooting is, is really off the charts. It's he makes a very uh, high percentage of his twos, which is exactly what Florida is looking for right now. Uh, six, nine, 230 pounds, uh, you know, just one of four players in all D one last year to average at least 10 points, nine boards, two blocks and shoot 55%. So not bad. Yeah. I mean, a big pickup Florida was going to have to get someone anyway to replace Tyree Samuel, even without talking about the health of Micah Hanlogton, who, by the way, I, I met him on um, Saturday at the spring game. He looks okay. Yeah. He seems like he's going to be back for the season. If he's not, he'll miss maybe a couple weeks or so. He'll be back for the brunt of the SEC schedule for sure. Barring, I mean, obviously barring a setback between now and then, but he, he should be fine. But 
anyway, Florida needed someone to replace Tyree Samuel. And this guy seems like <clears throat> maybe not quite as, as girthy, maybe in some ways he's a little bit bigger. Like he's, he's definitely taller, but it seems like Florida definitely upgraded from what was already, I think a strength Tyree Samuel, very good for Florida yeah. last year. I think Florida got someone even better in Sam Alexis. Obviously um, the, the shooting aspect of it is an upgrade. Tyree Samuel, you know, for all he could do well, he wasn't a great free throw shooter. He couldn't really turn around and hit jump shots. He, I mean, there's no reason for defenders to respect that. He had to kind of back them down and get a baby hook or something in the paint. Alexis can shoot those from a little bit further away. He doesn't have like three range, but he can shoot in the mid range jumper and get Florida some points that way. So that was a big get for Florida. I think that golden is still going to be looking to take a couple more pieces, but that's a great start to the, to the portal season for hashtag portal. God Todd. Yeah, no, for sure. Absolutely. And I mean, look, there were a ton of other programs that were going after him, including Georgia's Mike white. Uh, so that was a big get. You know, Florida beats uh, Mike White again. Uh, so that's kind of nice. And you know, remember in in 06 and 07, uh, guys like Joe Kim Noah, Al Horford, right? Like they were they were great two point shooters, right? If you're a good shooter, that's a that's obviously a great sign because what you can do, and we're seeing it in the all over the NBA. You know, Billy had those guys start shooting threes, and guess what? A lot of them started going in and. That's tough to guard. So who knows, you know, if, if he's a, a pure shooter, you know, from inside the arc, maybe he can extend that range a little bit. And and then Ford will be really fun to watch. That, that be would fun. be, I, I mean, I just like watch Al Horford shoot threes with the Celtics. And I'm always like flabbergasted. Like how, yeah. how can a big guy shoot threes that well? And obviously Sam Alexis is not Al Horford, but the idea that you can have a guy who's good at just backing opponents down in the paint and then just yeah. turning around for a quick baby hook. The, the, the idea that that guy can also like pull up and shoot elbow jumpers, like, Oh, okay. That's, that's a weapon. That's a real weapon that Florida can use throughout the course of the season. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And uh, hopefully we can get uh, my boy, Patrick young on here to, to talk some hoops too. At some point. Love it. That'd be, that'd you got be, you got the connections. It's part of why yeah. I got you you got those contacts. Although I do know Patrick too. That would be that would be an awesome that'd be an awesome guest. We can look forward to having him. Yeah, man. Uh, Neil, thank you very much. Uh, this was awesome, and uh, you know we'll obviously we'll do it again. We'll do it again soon uh, next week sometime, I guess. Um, you you're you're kind of the master of the the schedules here. I'm I'm just kind of doing what I what I'm told to do. So. Uh, so I'm kind well, of next following. next week next week will be a little difficult just because I have uh, Passover. I'm going back home to New Jersey, so I'll be at my parents and we're having seder's. So I don't know how or when we'll get something out there, but we'll definitely keep getting content out with you. I mean, you're you're obviously well versed in your sports, and I'm very happy to have you on board. So y'all, you'll you'll be hearing and seeing more of Mike Gillespie moving forward. So Mike, uh, welcome and thanks for being a part of it. Absolutely, thanks for uh, giving me something to do while I'm unemployed too. Is, uh, oh, that's is, always a plus. Exactly. Thanks, man.